Hi. Oh, here. Hi, Enrique. How are you? Hello, guys. How are you guys? Good. Hi. Um, so just before we get started, just want to let you know that we do record our consultations, sign up form and everything. Uh, we also record our lessons in general. Um, good. And you guys are Marvin's owners, correct? Yeah, yep. he's there today. Oh, sweet. I didn't, I didn't see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, go ahead and just fill me in on any information that you think is important for me to know about Marvin mm -hmm. and then any other goals you have uh, with, with him. Yeah, he's um he's a pretty good boy. He just turned a year. He um he's got a lot of energy uh -huh. and he's just pretty inconsistent at being good on walks. Like sometimes he's good and sometimes he's not. He's half pointer, so he tends to have his nose down. Yeah. And can pull a lot. He's we've gone like at times pretty good at saying like back and he'll come back to us but then he immediately he'll dart dart back yeah. so he like recognizes like what we're asking him to do but then he doesn't continue to do it we tried to use treats um we just kind of like have hit a wall in regards to walking um and getting him to like not pull and be next to us um and then our other big issue is recall. He's not, he knows yeah. when we're calling his name, he'll look up at us, but he doesn't, Only like if he's in our backyard, he doesn't. He'll respond if I say treat and then he'll come <laughs> yeah. right away. But yeah. other than that, he's kind of, uh, he's a little consistent when he calls his name, so. Yeah, yeah. And then jumping, he jumps yeah. on us when oh he gets excited. Um, that's kind of like the least of our concerns, but it's still yeah. an issue. But walking and the recall thing tend to be like our biggest issues with him. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, here in daycare, he seems, you know, he's pretty quiet in the kennel when he's resting, when he's playing. He, he gets, he can get pretty rough when he plays. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But other than that, we haven't had any issues with him here. Uh, but I can kind of see because right now he is, uh, he's a pretty, he, he's pretty big. He, he got pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We were yeah. surprised by that too. We were told he was going to be like 45 pounds. We we're used to big dogs, but yeah, we didn't yeah. think he was gonna be so tall and so yeah, he's, tall. he's tall and strong, so I can see like the, the nose to the ground and everything like that happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um anything else? I don't think so. I mean, overall we wish he like listened to us better, but he's not bad. I think we no, just wish that bad, he yeah. was better on walks because yeah. I think we'd be more enticed to take him out on more walks and mm -hmm. then he'd get more you know he'd get tired more easily and we'd do more with him um instead of just playing in our backyard but yeah i think that's about yeah it. the walking in like the call response i yeah. think is my two more important yeah yeah. yeah okay but, perfect yeah. um good so for for everyday life it sounds like you know you kind of like want to walk marvin and then maybe let him run around for a bit we call and then you kind of just go home um, do you ever see yourselves maybe wanting to take him to like a patio one day and like have him lay down, not move? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, okay, you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then do you do you ever see yourself like maybe going like hiking with him? And you want to like you know to be is that like a, like a, a oh yeah events that you guys are like not an event activity you guys yeah. Are, like, yeah, yeah. yeah like, like the whole like off leash thing would be nice. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely something great. in the future we'd like to be able to do. Um, yeah, we're pretty active. We like going on walks and, and hikes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that would be, yeah, that'd be awesome if we could do that. Yeah. Be able to like press him off leash would be nice because yeah. we don't press him that <laughs> right yeah, now. He'll just, so. he'll just run off. <laughs> yeah. 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 I see. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel for of, of what you're looking for and what you're wanting. It sounds like what you just, your priority is just the walk and recall. And then these other things could be like, yeah, if, if everything goes well, we can yeah. do it. Good. Yeah. And then right now, uh, I, I switch my mind. What do you walk Marvin on? Is he just on a regular collar or is it a harness? We've, oh. we've tried everything. So well, he's on a prong now. We, we have yeah. him on a prong. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I wonder if it fits him well. Um, we got like the medium size for like, you know, he's, I mean, he's a big dog, but he's kind of dainty as far as like he's skinny. Um, and then somebody told me the prong should be smaller, like yeah. closer together than like. Yeah. Hmm? Someone here? 
No, someone, a friend of mine told okay. him, told me that like the prong should be like smaller to mimic like a mom biting the back of his neck or something. And I was like, maybe ours is too big. Cause it seems to like, even if I tighten it too much, he just seems to like choke himself on it. We've tried him on a harness before. He hates the harness and like runs away from us when we get it out. We've tried him on just the collar. We did get like a mm -hmm. electric collar that had like a beep and a vibrate on it. Um, he did well on really well on that for the first couple weeks, yeah. and then he stopped caring. He um, stopped feeling it. I mean, yeah, he just didn't care anymore about like the vibrate didn't bother him. Yeah. And then we got a prong collar, and he's it's I feel like I feel like he's gotten a little bit better with the prong. Yeah, but I I'm concerned it doesn't fit him right, or like maybe we aren't like, using gonna, it yeah, correctly. But, the right way. Yeah, so we've tried everything basically. Yeah. Um, is the, did he come with the prong collar today? No, no I have no. it here. Um, we just put him on his regular, his regular collar. The next time we send him, should we send him in the prong collar? You can. I, mean, I can just kind of look at it just to see if it's if it's if it's the prong size or if you need more prongs on or less prongs. Just kind of see. Um, I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen it before. I don't think I have. Yeah, normally uh, we don't send him. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we never do that actually. Yeah. yeah um okay just wondering uh but yeah you know it's um yeah like you said you've you've tried many tools um uh, harnesses uh are a tool that we don't really use for training um unless we're trying to create um pulling so harnesses are harnesses are used for pulling it's like huskies wear harnesses mm. horses wear harnesses to pull carriages yeah. and then we also put harnesses on our protection dogs um do you know how the harness plays into protection work for us or no no so dogs have what's called opposition reflex so when you pull back they want to go forward that's why they want to pull it's like the huskies they want to pull in protection okay. training when we pull back on a dog they want to go forward so we let them go for a little bit and then pull back forward okay. and then release pull release pull then they start to get frustrated because like i want to go i want to go bite the guy why can't i get it once we get yeah. enough frustration or aggression we let the leash go and they go and bite the guy. So sometimes as people, as owners get puppies and they put a harness on them, sometimes they could be unintentionally trained them for protection work because the puppy will see something they want, right? You know, I was like, no, let's, let's keep moving. And then the puppy is like, hmm, that was, I didn't really like that. I wanted to go forward, but I, I didn't like this because this is also negative, like uh, this is um, negative pressure right here. They don't like this. Because okay. mm -hmm. uh, it's like, think of it as, um, you might have seen like a movie scene or maybe in real life, uh, like two guys are getting into it at a bar and then like uh the friend like holds the one guy back and makes that one guy want to go even more to the other yeah, guy yeah that's true so puppy sees this they they were like i didn't like that and as this keeps happening they start to get frustrated because like, i want to go to the other dog i can't get to the other dog because this is annoying yeah. so then that frustration turns into um because dogs like are very mouth based, so they want to vocalize their feelings. So yeah. they start to that's where reactivity and the barking comes from at other dogs. Okay. So it's just frustration from those. So that's why we don't use harnesses. There are other options as well, like prong collars. So prong collars are a good step for because, like you said, it's supposed to mimic a mother's dog bite. It's uh, physicality. Dogs are physical animals. From the moment they were uh, like four weeks about is when they start to get physicality. There's a really popular video. It's on YouTube. You might have seen it. It's a, a cream retriever. She's entering like a playpen and she's got like eight puppies there and they all start jumping on her. Mm. And then you hear her uh, growl. You see her show her teeth. And she snaps at three puppies. She like bites three. And you, mm. you hear them whimper and everything. But the rest, they all turn around, they walk away and they lay down. And it's just quiet. Right? Dogs don't say leave it off, no, or, or anything like that. It's just, you're going to do this, you're going to get this consequence. So yeah. that's where the prong collar comes into play is that when Marvin does this, this is going to hit. He's like, whoa, I didn't like that. Okay. Now some cons with the prong collar is that sometimes the dog can override that pressure because yeah. it's not yeah. enough. Uh -huh. so like that tends to happen for like our, uh, funny enough, our golden retrievers, you kind of see it a lot because they're just so happy, go lucky. They can't really perceive threat. So they're just like, whoa, wow, this is, you know, they're yeah. so wiggly. Um, you can teach heel, stay, sit down, come place with the prong collar as well. Um, okay. But another con would be, uh, since you're wanting recalls, that the only way you can make Marvin come to you would be when the lock, when the leash is on. Because once you take that leash off, there's no way to connect to him with yeah. the prong collar. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, problem cause is good. Again, it's, there are some pros and cons to it as well for that. Um, and then with, which, that, which then brings us to electronic collars. Uh, you guys are aware we do e collar training. And, yeah. You know, spread? Okay. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like you already have one or was that just- We have one, but it's not, it does have the shock on it. Mm -hmm. It's not, it was one off of Amazon. So it's not like a, I looked at the one that you guys recommend on your website. It's not as heavy duty, like it's not as nice of a one. The shock only goes up to like, I mean, I guess it's all subjective, but like 25 or 30. Um, so I think it's pretty low. We've used it on a couple of times. Um, the shock and mm -hmm. he has responded yeah, to it um we yeah. just didn't want to use it too much because we aren't trained in it and aren't working yeah. with the trainer on it so we didn't we want to like, ruin him on it yeah. and then like have to fix everything like, that we screwed up yeah. okay. um but i'm not sure if it's like a, like would be recommended by you guys got it okay Based. um yeah the the brand um we use is called dogtra uh our model um the reason why we like dog trust, uh, it's, it's, it's the, the brand that she's been using for more than half his career. And he's tried other brands as well, but this brand has gotten him the best uh, like results, how the dog looks, how the dog takes the stimulation. Because mm -hmm. there's other brands out there, other collars that give like a sharper feeling. It's more abrupt. It's, it, you okay. kind of see the dog's more flinchy with the feeling. Okay. This one's very dull. It's very calm. Um, it's, it feels like a TENS unit. I don't know if you ever had stim as a from a th physical therapist or a chiropractor. It's just like a muscle contractor. So you have like a knot or like a torn muscle. It just contracts the muscle. It's, okay. just, it's, it's the same technology that's used on humans, and it feels very similar. Okay. Um, the way they they work with their uh, patients is also similar to how we train our dogs. Um, the physical therapist would start low to high, and would ask the patient like, "Let me know when it's too uncomfortable." The client lets them know, "Okay, that's enough." They lower it two levels down, and then they just let the machine do its work. It's very similar to how we do our dog training as well. Um, our brand has 127 levels of stimulation. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 127. So think of your 25, the yeah. power of it, equal to 127. Okay. We just have so many more numbers to be more specific to, to Marvin, um, Marvin's personality or like the scenario we're in. Um, because and there's other costs that go up to eight as well. It's like you don't really have that many breaks. Yeah. Specific to the dog, um, they're waterproof. You know, mile long range. Uh, they're rechargeable. You just plug them in the wall. They last a long time. Battery lasts a very long time. Um, Jesse likes to call it electric, but not, but, it, but it's not electricity. So it's yeah. not flowing through the dog's body. It's just collar. You know, you probably looks similar probably, but there's a collar little box and the two contact points, whatever these two contact points are touching is what it's going to be contracting. Okay. Um, the dog the one we use and um, there's different models with that brand. And I'll, we'll go ahead and um, kind of send you all this information again to let you know yeah. that this one, this model would be a, a good fit for Marvin. Okay. Um, any questions about the e collar itself? And we do have a, sorry, we do have a, a, vibra a pager um it's the vibration um function on the collar okay. um, we don't have a beeper so the the reason why we don't use the the pager mm -hmm. because like you said either it's because it's it's just a static feeling it's just one right there's no levels yeah. so the dog can either at first maybe be like whoa i didn't really like that and over time just like eh, it's not that yeah, bad. that's exactly right. what happened um yeah. or the dog just gets super over like thrown off by it and they just freak out and then because it's too much so that's why the stimulation we can like give them a calmer like a, a calmer uh, a signal to them so they're not overreacting because of the the, the out of nowhere um yeah. does that make sense yeah yeah that uh, and then you'll hear other ways trainers train um their dogs the e-call like you know they'll do um verbal cue so let's say for example calm they don't calm beep they don't respond to the beep than stimulation. We don't do that as well because what can happen is if there's all these warnings, like dogs are very opportunistic animals. Like Marvin, like we've seen dogs play the game. They're like, I know when they say come, there's gonna be a beep. You know, maybe they may say come three more times because you know how dog owners are, right? They'll, they'll say like come like four more times. 
I'll have some time. And then, then I know the stimulation comes after. So I'm going to wait. So then it's just going to be a circle and a circle and a circle. And they're never going to be quick because that's what our training is. It's very quick and very uh, responsive. So that's why we don't do all those boardings. We just want it come and you just come right away there are no yeah. there are no chances that's how strict we want our, our recall to be because if 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 you're trained to do that and let's say marvin's running to the street yeah yeah no one, right. exactly yeah correct um any questions so far about the e-collar or, or anything i've just said no that makes sense okay yeah. um so the first thing we would need to do with marvin is teach him how e-collar works um, that he is the one in control of it, that he turns it on and he can turn it off. Marvin will never know that you're the one pressing the button because there's nothing connected to you and the feeling like physically. With the prong collar, let's say Marvin is um, uh, jumping on someone and then you want to give him a correction, which is a, it's called leash pop. So you pop the leash. Yeah. He sees that's from you because he'll look right at you like, oh, yeah. I'm going to give that. Econ, there's nothing connected to you. Dogs think it's... Um, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, the universe. So, uh, <laughs> so we're not saying big brothers talking to you yeah. or whatever, but um, they'll never know where it's coming from. They'll only know how to, that they think they're in control of it. Okay. Um, so we're letting him know how, how this works. Uh, it's called the pressure on, pressure off concept. And uh, the exercise we use first to teach him and to let him know how ECOD works is called HEAL. Um, it's our walking command. So this is also at the same time, getting you that walk. Mm -hmm. So our version of heal, the walking command is walk with me, stay with me, sit when I stop. So if you take five steps with Marvin, Marvin takes five steps. If you take 10, he takes 10. When you come to a stop, he used to automatically sit on your side with his shoulder parallel to your leg, loose leash in any environment. That's how strict our heel is. And we can teach all that with the e-collar. So we're teaching him again, how e-collar works. Um, and yeah. Um, how we walk on the on our on the leash appropriately like a structured walk okay um another um idea or another um result of this that can happen is that let's say he likes sniffing so much um the idea is that this is so strict of him being here or else he gets this right yeah. that he shouldn't really care about sniffing or care about anything else happening like other dogs passing you or people who are like oh my god your dog is so cute he yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't care he's like nope i i have to stick next to mom i have to keep moving forward um what else any questions about that so far i don't think so it makes sense um is there like a like pros or cons to like starting on a prong versus e-collar vice versa um like do you have a recommendation or is it kind of based off the dog or yeah so we don't do prong collar training it's only incorporated if needed so okay if if you've had experiences with marvin where i don't know or maybe he decided to book it right and he yanked your arm or if something like that happened and you know he's strong you can probably keep the prong collar on and we'll probably give you uh, uh an appropriate one for him just so, because sometimes, because let's say you're walking, you turn the corner, there's a dog there, and he's like, oh, no, he gets super excited, and he, he gives you a pull. Sometimes owners aren't quick enough to react to the e-collar, so they have that prong first. Yeah. Is prong needed for introducing him to e-collar? No. Um, do you need a prong at all? No. Okay. Um, it's just there if you like to have more uh, like physical control. Okay. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I wondered, like, you know, when you were saying that when the dog knows that you're in control of the prong collar, so he knows that, like, oh, mom's doing that versus the e collar, where it's just like the greater forces that be are doing it to him. Is there a, is one more positive than the other? Like, is it good for him to know that, like, his owners are his disciplinarians, like, that? we're the ones controlling it or is it better if he it just happens to him and then he's it's happening to him and he's controlling it yes yeah, so um uh, those are pros and cons so let's say let's say he's in the home and he barks or does he do anything inappropriate in the home no he's kind of gotten out of that puppy phase of I mean, every once in a while, he'll get like the zoomies and like grab random things to chew like socks and stuff but overall he's 
not a big barker and yeah he's not that bad inside okay <laughs> okay i'll use i'll use this as, a, as an example let's say for the zoomy let's say you're like i say he gets bigger for some reason um, <laughs> <Or not. laughs> then you're like man i can't have the zoomies anymore he's doing it more frequently for some reason yeah. you put the e-collar on he's probably just gonna stop like without oh, okay. yeah so then he's just thinking okay when the e is on i have to behave yeah so there's a con there he since he doesn't know where the e is coming from he doesn't know that when the e is off he still needs to be behaved because you're yeah. you're the authority figure so that's yeah. a con and we'll teach you ways how to we'll teach you exercises on how to keep that uh, ver, uh view yeah. point um for yourself to let him know that hey I don't need the e car to correct okay. you. I am okay. still, I'm, I'm still the boss. Okay. Yeah. Now, the re pros for it not being um, him not knowing where it's coming from is that, let's say um, you're working with him, and then let's say uh, you find out that his number on the e car is thirty out of one hundred twenty-seven, right? When you press the button on thirty, and then your partner presses the button on thirty. And maybe later on in life, you get children, right? And then maybe the children press the button on 30. It's still 30. There's no, oh, he only listens to, the, you know, uh, one partner because they're more stricter okay. and they're more stronger. Yeah. yeah. Right? 30 is 30 for everyone. So that's another yeah. wonderful thing about e cause that is so transferable. So when I work with more than one, one, uh, one person in my in-person lessons, partner number one goes first. They do all the hard work. They hand the leash off and the remote to partner number two, and they do like nothing. <laughs> 30 is still 30 there's the same yeah. feeling. there's no um there's no difference of of, yeah. of feeling with that yeah. and then uh, there are there are, dogs can tell who's stricter with the training who's not as strict with the training mm -hmm. right they can tell that who can who can they get away with and yeah. that's still won't affect your training so let's say you have mark let's say um you have like a dog walker uh walk marvin for some um for a period of time and they don't want to use the e-collar that won't ruin your training because he knows that when mom is here, this is gonna this feeling happens. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So there are pros and cons to the where is it coming from? Yeah. Um, but we can definitely, if we do recognize that, like in the home, like the only thing has the e-collar on, because we don't also don't want to make you too dependent on it, like in yeah. the home. Right. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Do you is it one of those things that like, let's say we train them on the e-collar and five years from now it's like we'll still use it on like here and there but you find you don't need to use it all the time or is it something that like once you start you generally always put it on when you leave the house yeah that's a good question um so for that um it's on when you need it so let's say you're gonna go for a walk and this is after your program it technically should still be on yeah um i've done all the hard work with my dog she's already three years old and i always have it on outside because I don't know what's going to happen on this walk. Yeah. You know, I, she's never, you know, heard a car backfire. She's never heard of, she's never been not yet. Yeah, now that I think about it, she's never been next to a motorcycle when it starts up. Yeah. So with these things we've never experienced before, like, let's say you're walking on a busy street and like a car accident happens yeah. and Morgan gets freaked out. Maybe he books it, right? He's already a strong boy. So maybe, you know, we've heard a lot of stories of Leash just getting pulled out the hand, yeah. all he's falling to the ground, collars breaking, collars slipping, the dog's gone. So yeah. when the dog is gone and running away, that's called flight mode. When dogs are in flight mode, they're thinking kill or be killed because they're they're running for their life. Yeah. So sometimes um, Marvin come won't really make him come back to you because again, he's running for his life. So the e-car is here to override the brain to make him do the 180 come back to you. Okay. So it's just for these things that we can't predict. Yeah. Uh, even when he's off leash, definitely have the e-car on. Um, yeah. Because the you know, owners do get comfortable with certain things, but uh, Jesse had a client. Uh, the dog was a resource guarder. Um, he didn't like other dogs playing with his ball. He 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 would guard. He would protect the ball. So they were sectioned off, and they were playing their their fetch and whatever. Then another dog sees the ball getting thrown and and decides to chase that ball. So now you have two dogs going like this. So in that moment, she had to ramp ramp it up, and because the dog is in drive mode. So when it's yeah. chasing the ball, so you need to stop the dog from chasing the ball and make him do the 180 come back to yeah. you. So in those moments, I would I would like to know that if anything happens, I know I have control over my dog. Yeah. Um, let's say in the home, it's just 
you know, everyone's just hanging out. And you're like you said, you don't really see anything in the home worth addressing or he's a good boy in the home. Then you don't need to eat collar in the home. Yeah. Um, let's say you're going to have guests come over and you know he's going to be jumping on these people. 30 minutes prior, collar him up, address whatever that is needing to be addressed on arrival. And if you find that Marvin is relaxed throughout the night and then you don't need it, you can take it off. Or maybe if you're like, eh, I'll keep it on just in case he gets hyped up again. Um, so again, it's on when you need it. Um, but like if you're just hanging out, you don't need to put it on. Does it answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. It makes sense. Good. Um, any other questions? I don't think so. Not about those things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the reason uh, we don't really have pro against for prong collar is before six months, under six months, we will do the, the food stuff. Yeah. Um, we love positive enforcement. It's for six months and under, puppies love it, and it's, it's great. After six months, that's when we start e-collar training. We've done younger before. We had a doorman. That's a European doorman, so she was going to be big. And... She came for a four week born train. She was four months old or five months, four, I think it was four months. And we were doing e collar there. Um, it's more nuanced, more for the trainer, it's, it's more specific. Uh, but usually six months is the age where owners will come to us saying, okay, fine, we'll do e collar training. Although they'll be like, fine, we'll do it. Yeah. And it's also when the brain has developed enough to understand this sort of um, pressure. Yeah. So Think of like positive reinforcement as like a 20% success rate, um, prong collar like 60, maybe 50. And then e-collar for us is 90 to 100% of reliable obedience on leash and off leash. So if I'm giving these options, I'm going to go to the e-collar right yeah. away because if I already know prong collar can't really get me that much success, I'm not going to mess with it. Let's just do e-collar. Yeah. Um, it's also super simple for the owners because um, everything in this, in, in, the, in, in this world is now becoming button-based. So all you gotta do is press the button, right? Yeah. Um, so with the prong class, more nuance, just more um, pressure on, you know, relax, yeah. you know, get attention, all these other, all these other things uh, that owners sometimes get discouraged with positive only. Owners get discouraged as well. But with e car, we know we can get the results fast, so that yeah. it keeps the owner um, motivated to keep going more. Like, wow, that that was amazing. Let's let's go more and more and more. And it, it, it's just everyone becomes more happy, and. Um, that's like what we've seen from e-collar is this, it's easy for the owners to kind of grasp the idea. Cause again, we're, we're the dog trainers. We know like I, we can do any, any you know, uh, with all the methods and tools we're given, we can make things happen. But for dog owners, that's not realistic. Right. Um, Cause sometimes the trainers make that mistake of training the dog owner to become a dog trainer, but you know, they don't need to know all these fancy words or these fancy yeah. things or these routines. It's just, they just want to walk their dog. That's yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, any other questions? I don't think so. I mean, I'm interested in I, how how everything's structured, or you know, how the training goes from here. Like, if we decide to do e collar, which we were interested in, it, um, we wanted to like know a little bit more about what you guys recommend and what would be good for Marvin. But um, like, if we decided to go the route of e collar, like, what are like how do we move forward and what's the training kind of yeah. like? So we have the in-person, so it's one-on-one -on -one where a trainer uh, meets with you for an hour once a week. Um, we have the six-week program, the nine-week pro oh, no, sorry, the three-week program, six, nine, 12. Okay. Um, for what I'm hearing, if you're just like, I don't know what's it called, uh, like the bare bones, you yeah. know, the walk and the heel, I mean, on the, the heel and the recall, Mm -hmm. You're more like a six-week program. Okay. Um, if you're wanting more stationary control where you want to take them to a patio, you don't want them to move for an hour, um, that's more than nine week. Okay. And the 12th week is all those things, but then you go hiking every other weekend and you need, to, you need him to be completely off these trained. Okay. That's how like, we like to describe our programs. Okay. So when it comes down to it, it's just like how much control you want to with Marvin. Okay. You know? Um. You have the option to continue to work with me uh, or you can work with Jesse. Um, that's, that'll be confirmed like, after the consultation, everything like that. Um, okay. So six week, it would be two classes heal, okay. two classes recall, and then you have two classes left. Uh, we can teach you uh, like one stationary command and then we can touch a little bit on uh, like long leash where we can review all the commands and kind of build you a little bit, give you a little boost 
two off leash if you would like to continue moving forward. Um, and then you're also more than welcome to purchase more classes. So you can start off with a six week and then you're like, um, this is great. I want more. You can get the three week or you can get another bundle. Um, so that's the in-person. Everything is verbal instruction. So we don't touch the dog. We only coach you through to and, and guide you what to do because at the end of the day, it's going to be you handling Marvin. Um, so the owner learns a lot more. Um, they're more part of the training. Uh, it's a little slower. We only gave you one topic at a time just so we're not overwhelming you with information. Yeah. Uh, what else? Any questions about the in-person? I don't think so. Because then we have the board and train and the daycare and train. Or uh, daycare and train would be similar to kind of what we're doing now, uh, where you just drop him off. But now we're just training him throughout the day. Okay. So throughout his day, he are we have the five day bundle, the ten day bundle, the fifteen and twenty. You're in the ten day range. Again, it, it just depends how much control you're wanting. Is that think of the ten day bundle equal to the six week program. And then the 15 day bundle equal to the nine week and then 20 equal to 12. Um, with the 10 day bundle, if you choose that, uh, which is like the minimum or you get the five day bundle would also be great. Um, that, that, that will work, but the 10 day is recommended just because it gives us more time. Okay. Um, so with any program you choose for daycare and train, he will learn heal, stay, sit, down, come and place. Um, are you familiar with place? Um, I've seen your guys' Instagram where you've done it, but I mean, I haven't done it. Got it. <laughs> is, um, go to your bed, sit down, stay down, lay down, doesn't matter. Um, you just have to go. Off. Okay. That's all. We do kind of like a version with my old dog. I used to do spot, go to your spot. Um, yeah, I could go to your bed. Man. Yeah, and he was definitely... Um, way more responsive than Marvin ever has been. We tried to do it like with my last dog, it was we'd give him a bone and we'd be like, go to your spot, take it to your spot. And he would take it to his spot. And then when we got in trouble, it was like, you need to go to your spot or just go there to chill out. And he was good. And I thought I'd be able to do it with Marvin. And it's just, it's a yeah. no-go for me, at least with him. I'm sure it's possible, but I, it's not as easy as it was with my last dog, so. Okay, yeah. Um very similar to that, like kind of go to your bed command. Yeah. Uh, so he'll learn that. And then like you see on our stories where the dogs are laying in the bed, he'll be doing that activity as well. Okay. So where those beds are located, they're right in the middle of the floor. So like they're seeing clients walk in for their sessions, dogs are playing over there, puppies are playing behind them, the tremors are right next to them. So they're, they're in it. And yeah. they need to just relax while activity and energy is, 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 is happening. Yeah. Um, Everything is videotaped, so you're seeing, um, you know, how he's taking to the e-car for the first time. You're seeing how I teach heal. You're seeing how I teach all these commands and how I'm telling you guys to practice and what works uh, for Marvin. Um, so for the ten day bundle, you get two one hour long videos. The first video is just the foundational, like this is us teaching it. This is like how we make progress. The second video is us advancing to the long leash phase. So we hold a 30 foot long leash and we run through all the commands, teaching how to advance his obedience. Cause now, now Marvin has 30 feet to make mistakes. So we're basically okay. telling him, make all the mistakes you want. We're gonna work you through it. And we're gonna teach the owner how to, how to handle that. Okay. Um, he'll still get to play. He'll still get to do the regular daycare activities. It's just now he's getting more activities cause he's getting trained. Um, but, 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 and we also, um, depending how the weather is, we like to take our dogs on training walks. So like to Home Depot, PetSmart, um, because it's great that the training, um, it works here, right? But if it, if it doesn't work outside, what's the point of the training? Uh, yes. so we definitely do try to expose the Marvin with the e-car to other areas like Home Depot. Um, cause like there's a dog park here, Home Depot's right around the corner and then PetSmart's on the way back. Um, da, 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 da. With the daycare and train bond, um, program and the board and train program, you get what's called follow-up lessons. So okay. for the 10 day program, you get, I believe three hours of follow-up lessons. And for every, for the, for 15 and 20, you get more hours, obviously with those. Okay. So you're getting your videos and then you're getting that one-on-one -on -one time. The one-on-one -on -one time is um, used however you like it to be used. So sometimes owners, let's say you did 10 day, after that fifth day, the owner's like, let's do a follow-up lesson. I want to, I want to, let's see what, what's, what's going on. 
we yeah. teach you everything. We kind of run through like this, is how you do this. And, you know, you get your videos, so you have some sort of already uh, knowledge about it. And, you know, uh, we can kind of just, I'll just like make sure everything's being practiced correctly. Um, yes. I had one owner watch the video, practice first, then a week later reached out and was like, okay, everything's going great. Let's have a follow-up lesson because I want to make sure I'm practicing correctly. So I can just review what you're doing. Everything's great. Everything's great. Mm. One owner was um, too shy of the e-collar. Uh, so she uh, wanted a trainer there first before she started to practice. Okay. Um, so if that's the case, well, you know, we can have our follow-up lesson first, then you practice. Um, but you can schedule these follow-up lessons whenever you like. Um, okay. What else? Are those 10 days? So the 10 day board and train, are those 10 consecutive days? Like one week of five days and the next week of five days or how are, are they recommended to be consecutive or spread out or? Um, for the first, I'd say about three to five days. I like them to be like uh, a Monday, a Tuesday and a Wednesday or like a Monday and a Wednesday. Once like his first five days are done, like those last five days can be whatever you guys want. Okay. I'm, I'm working staff um, Saturday to Wednesday. So okay. I'm not here Thursday and Friday. Um, and it'll be me in the videos and everything. So I, that's why I recommend Monday through Wednesday, either of those three days uh, I recommend so that I'm here to work with Marvin. So I teach, I teach everything. Yeah. Um, teaching and then reinforcing it, they're very different. So once I teach it, then uh, our other trainers here, our novice trainers, will work with him because uh, what's needed for um, his day here is repetition. So he's getting, you know, trained with not only me but other people. So he's getting, he's learning to do like you know, everything. Like, no matter who it is, I need to respond to the ECOG for that. You know, um, what else? Uh, but you don't need to do them back to back. Um, um, it's not needed. Um, yeah. What else? And then you don't uh, scheduling as well. You don't need to like book dates. Um, you come. I, I think we. I think uh, whoever you speak to, Elizabeth, might prefer it because we did like get a bunch of daycare and trains. So it just just to help so we don't get like five daycare. Yeah. Trains. <laughs> you can actually like train them. So yes, that, yeah. <laughs> um, but like if, if you do book, uh, like you schedule days, if you don't come that day, you still have that day. You don't lose that okay. day. It's a bundle. Um, any other questions about the daycare and train? I don't think so. I'll fill you yeah. out. For everything you um, no, that, that all makes sense to me. Okay. Um, then we have the board and train. Um, the board and train is the one week, two week, a three week and a four week program. If you were to do the board and train where he's staying with us overnight, uh, for two weeks, uh, I recommend a two-week program, maybe. Um, for that, you get four hours of follow-up lessons. Um, everything's the same. He still learns. He'll stay down. He'll stay sit down, come place, and it just gives us more time to work with him. Like he works early in the morning until like around like eight or nine ish is like when his last session happens. So we're working all day, um, and then on the weekends it gives us and like uh, more free time to do like outside stuff because it's kind of slowing for daycare so like we can do more stuff with the board and trains outside um the follow-up lessons work the same way you can schedule that like after his first week kind of see what's going on um the only difference is that we're we're kind of keeping it for a little bit yeah i know well, just depends on how availability yeah. works so like if like you know we have, uh you know if you're going out of time for like oh you know for a little bit you're like we'll we'll take advantage of this the board and train will work um but for what I recommend program-wise, um, again, pros and cons for the in-person is that it just takes longer. Mm -hmm. um, there's more like a more homework you have to do. With all the programs, you have there's there's definitely homework. Yeah. But this is more of a time thing. Um, pros, you're doing it all yourselves um, and you're learning a lot more. Um, pros and cons for the, the facility training stuff is that pros, we get it done faster um getting your videos and everything you're learning and, and all that stuff but cons at first the train is going to be tied to us and the facility here first so those follow lessons are just to let you know that um kind of transfer everything to you appropriately and then the videos as well so you kind of get the hang of everything mm -hmm. um i was telling you earlier uh, a common concern a common concern owners have with these staying over here programs 
or working with the trainer and then the owners is that uh, we've heard from other clients from other trainers that they say that the dog was good when the trainer was here, but when the trainer left, the dog was chaotic, whatever. Makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't happen with e-collar because if we're, if uh, if in the videos you see him, if you've seen me work with Marvin and I find it to be 30, for example, 30 is 30 for everyone. So then when I hand him to you, he's like, oh, this is the same feeling with Enrique at the facility. It's the same thing over again. So there's no he's stronger than her or she's stronger than him or any of these little uh, differences. Does that make sense? Good. Um, any questions about the programs? I don't think so. Um, all, all the pricing and stuff for those are on your website or? Yeah. Um, so after this, follow, um, after this consultation, my assistant Tina is going to reach out to you guys, send you a follow-up email about everything that we, so we spoke about. Okay. So just gonna send you the programs I recommend. So okay. um, she'll include the born train, daycare and train in person. What program? Uh, like what up? Like what's what's the word? How much time is needed for each program to recommend with the prices? Um, the e collar I recommend for Marvin, which is gonna be a link to Amazon. You have two options. You can either purchase it yourself or you can purchase it through us. It's the same price and everything. Um, if you purchase it through us, you have thirty days. If something happens within those 30 days, you can give it back to us. We deal with doctor and we borrow you a car in the meantime. After those 30 days, you would have to contact doctor yourselves. Um, and then she's also going to, oh no, you're 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 a ginger. So that's pretty you're already kind of a step ahead because you need, it would have been signed this agreement form, but you've already signed the agreement. Um, if you were to do daycare and training, you've already got the shot records and all that stuff turned in. So then you're kind of a step ahead. Okay. So then it's just letting Tina know when um, you like to proceed with the training, uh, whether it be daycare and train or in-person or board and train. Um, if you do move to daycare and train, she might she may forward you to uh, Elizabeth. She handles all the daycare and train board and trains here. Um, what else? And if you want to do in-person, it'll be through Tina. Uh, she handles my calendar. She kind of does all my in-person schedulings. If you want to move to Jesse, she'll forward you to uh, Maria. Uh, Maria handles Jesse's schedule and all his in-person uh, okay. meetings. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Um, trying to think if I missed anything. Um, other than that, it's, it's um, just like you said, just general obedience um nothing out of the ordinary of marvin and how old is he again he's a year he just turned so a year, year yeah yeah okay like, um, so. okay and how much does he weigh about he's almost 60 pounds i have a feeling he's gonna fill out a little bit more in this next year but yeah. hopefully he doesn't he get like bigger yeah usually i think the size stops at like a a year and a half and then after that, it's just kind of filling it out. And then. Because yeah, yeah. he's pretty um, skinny boy right now. He's a skinny boy. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying to think. Uh, you guys have any other questions or anything else that. I don't think so. This has been super informative. Do you have anything? So. I don't think okay. so. Yeah. Okay. Um, if anything comes up, feel free to email me. You have my email. Yeah. Um, or if Tina reaches out, you can email Tina if you have any questions about like the billing or the booking process. Um, other than that, yeah, other than that, keep an eye for that follow email and then we'll be in touch. Great. Cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Enrique. Right, nice to meet you. Yep. All right. Bye. 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 Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you.